How's it going, everybody? Jeremy Buendia, IFBB Pro and Evogen Sponsored Athlete. I'm here with my Evogen Athlete, Tori Wood Woodward. Uh, we're two weeks post our San Jose Pro Show. Uh, we're about eight and a half weeks out from Olympia. We'll both be stepping on stage again for the second time this year. Um, we're out here in San Jose at Ray's Built Tough Gym, and what we're going to be working on today is a chest workout. And uh, I'm going to be introducing Tori into into some of the training techniques that Holly and I put together using the FSC7 training program. Um, Tori in his offseason or uh, leading up to Olympia is really going to start focusing on developing his upper chest. So I'm hoping today to help him out, show him a little of my techniques, and you know he'll just show me some of his to help you know bring up the weak points. So Tori's going to explain to you a little about what he's been doing previously leading up to prep, and then uh, we'll jump into our workout and show the adjustments that we'll be making. So this is the perfect time uh, to meet up with Jeremy and, and see what him and Hani have been working on. Um, my weak point has been my upper chest, and uh, that's something that I'm going to be trying to develop and really grow um, leading into the Olympia. Um, so check us out. We're about to blast chest. All right, so first thing you want to do in double incline is the, your body position. You want to hit a bench about 45 degrees, between 30 and 45 degree angle. When you get set, I want you to lay back. Only your hips and your shoulder blades will be touching, so you need to roll your shoulders down and back to lock those shoulders in place. That's gonna enable your body to open up the chest and just pin those traps down. You pin the traps down and back behind you, it's gonna be able to open up that upper chest and be able to activate that a little bit more. So kick them up, get them up, press up. Now let's pull the shoulder blades down and back. There you go. Open the chest up, good contraction. We're not locking out. Right there, good stretch. And we're squeezing through the pecs. We're not pushing the weight, we're squeezing the pecs. Mind and muscle control, stay with it. Two more. Let's go, I got you. One more. And up. Good, good set. All right, we're jumping into dumbbell incline flies again. Bench between 30 and 45 degrees. Pick a weight that you're able to control. This is a, not a strength exercise, this is about feeling the motion and feeling the chest contract. We're starting our 50-pound dumbbells are working up a little bit, but again, it's about mind and muscle control and really stretching and contracting those fibers. Good stretch. He's going to push up and rotate his wrist in to isolate that upper chest. Good stretch it out, reach out. He needs to come through, straighten those arms out a little bit more. There you go, reach him out a little bit more, keep his elbows out. Right there, yep, up. Good. Right there, up. You don't need to go too deep on these ones, just so you feel the chest, the chest stretch. Right there, he's going to push up and rotate, good. Constant tension, don't lose tension on that chest at the top of the exercise. A lot of people will lose that tension because and not flex the upper chest. So stay present during your workout and know what you're working. Good, Tori. All right, we're our third set in here on double incline flies. Typically for my workouts, I like to hit about four sets, not including warm-up sets, so four working sets. And our rep range is gonna drop off as we go heavier, but we generally wanna stay between that eight to 12 rep range. Rest time is minimal. The reason why I want to keep the rest time minimal is to keep make sure we optimize that pump. We don't let the muscles flatten out. We want constant blood flow of those muscles to really expand them and optimize that cellular expansion, really tear down those fibers. The more we tear down those fibers, the bigger pump we get, it's going to allow more room to grow. Let's get after it, Tori. Okay, so typically when, I, when we're training chest, I like to start out real heavy with my double inclines. That's like my major motion. I'm really trying to develop the upper chest. So I'm going to go heavier on those sets. And as I get towards the end of my workout, I'm really lightening up the weight and just focusing on, like I keep repeating, the mind and muscle connection throughout our workout. We're going to jump into standing cable flies. We're avoiding any, any flat barbell bent, branch. So this is what I use to replace it. Some cable flies protects my shoulders. It allows me to have constant tension and contraction all the way through the whole range of motion. Start off real light, I just want to make sure I get those muscles fired and prep for my next set. All about squeeze, I'm stretching, chest contraction, all the way through. You can see fibers firing as I'm squeezing together. Open it up, squeeze through. Again, if you see my traps, they're not moving. They're pinned down and back and it's all chest. A lot of people will roll their shoulders forward and incorporate their traps and that's what takes away from the upper chest and it causes bad posture a terrible back pose and lack and of course lack of upper chest so the real lightweight right now just getting those fibers fired and finding the motion so i go a little bit heavier i'll have that mind and muscle connection chest up shoulders back good stretch flex from flex from the bottom 
So start squeezing from there. All chest. There it is. Feel it all at the top. Tension, tension. There it is. Bring it up, chest up, chest up. There you go. You can even rock, rock forward, bring your hands back a little bit as you come back. There it is. You're gonna open it up a little bit more. There it is. Watch this, watch this fiber split as it comes through. Real lightweight. You can see in his face how hard he's working. Nothing but 40 pounds on there. So in between sets, I like to sit on glycogex. Glycogex is a, a fast acting carb. Um, the reason why I can sit on this throughout my workout, especially my off season and, and laggy body parts, is it's gonna help refuel my muscle glycogen in between my workout. That way I can keep my pump throughout the whole, the whole training session. You know, if you ever are training in the gym and you get a good pump initially and you start flattening out towards the end, because your body's running out of muscle glycogen and your body isn't able to stay full. So by sipping on glyco throughout my workout, I even load up on it a little bit before, it optimizes my pump, keeps my muscles full, and keeps me feeling good throughout my whole workout. It's also great for post-workout to get that good insulin spike after a workout to help, you know, shuttle those nutrients right into your muscle.